So I've been using Stable Diffusion's model scope for a couple of days now, and so far, personally, I found the results to be quite impressive. So to get access to model scope, you have two options. First way is to use the public hugging face space. I'll, link, I'll put a link to this in the description below. And from here, you enter your prompt. And click generate. Now straight away, you'll see the problem with using a public hugging face space. And that is because it's public, it's really busy. And so right now I have no access to it whatsoever. Alternatively, you could duplicate the space. And by doing this, you could also pay for a private GPU. So in this way, you won't have to wait in any queues. And you also have the option of using Google, Google Colab if that is something you want. The second way and the way I recommend is to use the Stable Diffusion's Web UI extension. So to do this, you'll need to go to the GitHub link for model scope and copy the URL. I'll put a link to this in the description below. From here, go to extensions, it's all from URL, and then paste in the following, and then click install. Once it's installed, apply and restart UI, and you will have access to the model scope text to video tab. Now that we have the tab available to us, we need to download the model scope weights. To do this, go back to the GitHub page and go down to where it says where to get the weights. And from here, you'll see two links. One for the original Hugging Face repository and the second for half precision pruned weights. Now the link you click depends on what sort of GPU you have and how much VRAM it has. As model scope is very intensive on the GPU's VRAM, I recommend if you have a 12 GB VRAM or more, click on the first original Hugging Face repository link. And if you have less VRAM than that, so let's say an 8 GB VRAM GPU, click on the half precision pruned weights. And by doing this, you will avoid a lot of unnecessary problems and headaches. So depending on which link is relevant to you, click on it. Download the last four files. So everything except the git attributes and the readme. And this applies to whether you're using the full, full weights or the pruned weights. Once that is done, go to your stable diffusion folder Click on models, click on model scope, E2V, and paste in the four files. Now, if you do not have the model scope or T2V folder, you'll have to create these first and then paste in the four files. Now, once that's done, you should have be able to use model scope. Now that we have access to model scope, I'll put in the following prompt and click generate. Now, immediately you'll notice you won't have any progress bar like you did with text to image. And that is because, well, this extension's really in the beginning stages, so it's not fully developed yet. But to see the, how much progress you, the, the video is in, you will have to click on the terminal, which you used to start Stable Diffusion in the first place. And from there, you should be able to see a progress bar and it will indicate how far along the, mod, the video is in being made. Once the terminal says that the video has been generated, click here and you should be able to see the final video. Now, pressing play, we can now see the video in action. And now this brings me to my first tip about using model scope is that you shouldn't be using complex movements. And this is because as you can see that model scope has a tough time dealing with complex movements. So the way to get around this is by changing your prompt to make it involve much simpler movements. So let's say you had a man running or a man walking, changing it to a man skating is a much easier thing for model scope to do. Or better yet, don't even use humans at all. Use stuff like cars, planes, or even ships, because them moving is much less complex and much easier for model scope to do. So to demonstrate this, I will put in the following prompt and then click generate. Now that it's generated, I'm going to update the video then click play. And straight away, you could see it looks a lot much, it looks much better than the previous prompt. And that's because cars are much easier for model scope to do. As like I said before, they're not as complex. Now this leads on to my second tip. And that is 
do not use realistic, do not aim for realistic looking videos. And what I mean by this is that, yes, even though we didn't use a, a video with complex movements, we still can spot a bit of artifacts and it doesn't seem right. And the reason for this is that we're aiming for a realistic look and model scope cannot do that well. So the way to get around this is to use stuff like comic book styles or anime styles. And that is a lot more, much more forgiving when creating the videos because they're designed not to be realistic in nature. So you're less likely to notice any artifacts within the video. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna paste in this following prompt and click generate. Now that it's finished generating, I'm gonna update the video, click play. And this looks much better. It looks like it could be from an old a cartoon from back in the day. And that's why using comic book styles and anime styles is really helpful in creating your videos. And that's because they're not even, they're not meant to be realistic in the first place. So you can get away with a lot of artifacts within the actual video. Now, moving on, you may notice there's a slight shutterstock imprint in all your videos. That is because model scope was trained on a lot of shutterstock images. And so these watermarks are sort of unavoidable. And that's why you see in the negative prompts, we have the word watermark and text just to try alleviate some of that and try to remove as much watermark as we can. But right now, at this moment in time, the shutter mark watermark is still very visible, well, mostly visible if you look close enough. But I expect that in the future to someone to have developed a way to remove that entirely. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing that you need to know is that unlike text to image where I can reuse the last seed from the last generation, I can't do that automatically here. And why we need to reuse the seed from the last generation is because let's say I got a video I like and I want to modify these other parameters, I need to keep reusing the last seed so that I generate the same video. And then I can mess around with these parameters and see how, how they affect the final video. So the way around this is that every time you generate a video, you're just going to want to input manually a random seed. So it could be any number and then just put it into your C prompt and make a note of it somewhere and make a note of the actual prompt itself and click generate. Now that video is finished being made, I'm going to update the video. Now I'm going to click play. And now that we know the seed uh, by manually inputting one, now every time we click generate, the video sh will stay the same. We keep all the other parameters the same. And now that's very useful because now we can isolate each parameter and see how they affect one another. So to begin steps, steps exactly how it works in text to image. The less steps you have, the less detailed your video will be. Whereas the more steps you have, the more detailed your final video will be. But keep in mind, the more steps you have, the longer it will take for your video to generate. And this is especially important in model scope because it takes significantly longer to generate a video than it does in text to image. Now, moving on, we have CFG scale, CFG scale. Think of it as one side is creativity. The other side is following the prompt. So a lower CFG scale means that the stable diffusion is going to be much more creative and less likely to follow the prompt. Whereas on the high end, you, you're telling it to follow the prompt no matter what, but this has a good chance of introducing artifacts within the actual video. The next thing is width and height. So right now we're doing 256 by 256. And there's a reason for that. Like I said earlier, model scope is very VRAM intensive. So for that reason, we can't create high, high quality or resolution videos as of yet. Maybe in future when GPUs are much stronger, we'll be able to generate full 28, 1080p videos. But for now, it's just not possible. Moving on, we have frames. And frames is the amount of frames you want in your video. But there's one important thing to note, and that is, let's say you have a video you really like and want to increase the amount of frames within it. Unfortunately, you cannot go onto this slider and just increase the frames. Because what will happen is that the whole video itself will change. So you can't, it's not possible right now just to increase or decrease the frames and expect the video to stay the same using the same. Moving on, we have batch count. Now batch count is how many videos you want generated in one run. 
So if I set it to a batch count of five, I will get five videos back. But when I go to update the video, it will only return the fifth video and display it here. The way to see the other four videos that would have been generated is to go to outputs, image to image images, text to video model scope, and if you scroll down, you'll see your latest generations. And the way to tell it's a batch it's made using batch count is that you'll have the number for the first video, then you'll have the same number again, but with an underscore one for the second video, same number with an underscore three for the second video, third, fourth, fifth, and you get the idea. So batch count is especially useful because model scope does take much longer than text to image. So with batch count, you're able to step away from your PC while it generates a huge, a lot of videos for you to work with. Now, the last thing is ETA. Now, bearing in mind what I said about seeds, how that if you know the seed and paste it in and keep all parameters the same, I can click generate and the video will be the same. ETA does put, change this rule slightly. And that is because by putting a value between zero and one into the ETA value, think of it as a randomizer. So every time I go to generate the video again, it'd be slightly different depending on how intense your ETA value is. So right now, if I set it to zero and I click generate three times, I can guarantee that I'll be getting the same video three times. However, if I set it to a non-zero value and click generate, now every time I click generate, each video will be slightly different. And that is what ETA does. It sort of, I believe it adds random noise into the actual video itself and changes the video. Moving on, we have vid to vid. And this is exactly the same how image to image works. So you put in your video, you put in the prompt, then you can make a new video from using an existing video. So all the parameters are mostly the same, like you see in text to vid. The only one to be aware of is denoising strength. The denoising strength is basically how how closely you want it to follow your original video. Video. So a lower denoising strength means that it will be very similar to your original video, whereas a higher denoising strength will mean that it will completely deviate from your actual original video. Output settings, FPS. Now, another thing to note with FPS is, let's say you have a video you really like and you want to increase the FPS to make it look smoother. Unfortunately, if you do increase the slider and use a higher FPS, what ends up happening, what the effect is, it, it gives the impression of it having a fast forward effect. So it looks really fast. It doesn't look smooth as what you probably intend it to look as. Whereas if you lower the FPS, it gives it a more sort of blocky look. And that is the way FPS works. So you cannot use it just to smoothen out a video that you really like. Moving on, we have CRF. Now, CRF is not directly related to model scope. It's more to do when the video is being stitched up together. So when all the Im individual images are being combined to form the final video, this determines the, the bit rate of the video, I believe. So a lower CRF means that it'll be much more higher quality, but a higher file size. Whereas a higher CRF means it will be a much lower quality but at a reduced file size. And that is it. That is the a basic intro to model scope. Just two things to keep in mind. Two things if you take away from this video is do not use complex movements and always try to use comic book styles and anime art to instead of aiming for more realistic life looking interpretations because that will make your videos look so much more better. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.